Hello, beloveds. I was inspired today to allow some beautiful channeling to come through with higher messages of love and light to assist you through the end of this year, 2020, this particular month of October is quite intense and trying. They've all been, but this one has a different energy to it that is really creating some very deep fear and mass hysteria in different parts of the world. Lots of increased rage and anger and even violence. Lots of deep hopelessness that many are feeling. A lot of loneliness. And I am here as a divine grace channel listening to the divine higher light and sharing with you some spiritual messages to support you, to awaken you, to open you to new ways of perceiving and understanding what is happening on the planet at this time so that you might find peace and groundedness within yourself at this time. If you are seeking peace from the outside, I would ask you, suggest that you avoid doing such a thing as it will only create the opposite of peace. You will not find peace in the outside world at this time, no matter where you look. Understand that we are in a powerful, transformative time that has been written about in the holy writings of many world religions throughout time. We are at the ending of an old cycle and also at the beginning of a new one. So it is the end of our old world. That is true, but it's not the end of the entire world as we know it. It's the end of the old ways, the old consciousness, the lower ways of being, acting, thinking, and doing that were harming our planet and leading us into extinction. And by the grace of our divine creator, Mother, Father, God, and all the higher beings of light that love us, they have stepped in to assist us. They have been stepping in for many, 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 many millennia to assist us in this process of consciously awakening within our physical bodies. This is what is unique about this time that has never been done in the history of the universes. In all creation, this is a beautiful experiment of awakening within our own physical bodies to the truth that we are spiritual beings of light. And so our physical bodies at this time are needing to actually change and physically change in order for us to hold the higher spiritual light that we already are. We already are conscious spiritual beings of light who have descended and incarnated into physical bodies at this time in order to assist the process of Mother Earth evolving and rising in consciousness while still remaining in the physical form. This may sound very odd or strange to some of you who've never heard this before. I understand that. So it's okay if your logical human mind does not understand this. 
It's not meant for the logical human mind to understand this. It is meant for your soul, your spiritual truth, the soul wisdom, the heart that you are, the spiritual being that you are that is made of light and vibration. This message is for that part of you to awaken and step forward to understand the truth of what is actually happening at this time so that you will not be pulled into the dark abyss of the negative fear stories and fear narratives that are happening on the planet at this time. The beings of light also understand that you may feel very alone, very lonely on this journey because in some way your heart, your spirit does maybe deeply understand what's actually going on and you're just upset that others don't see it. You're upset that your family doesn't see it. You're upset that your friends are caught up in the fear narratives. They're caught up in the manipulation and the lies that are being told in the world at this time. And it probably frustrates you as a divine being who remembers your truth and your source. And the message from the beautiful beings on high is to know that everyone, everyone on the earth is playing a specific role that you may not be aware of or that you may not understand, that may not make logical sense to you. There are some souls on the planet that are playing the role of staying asleep, maybe until the last minute when they awaken. Other souls are not meant to awaken at this time. They're meant to trigger others in awakening by them staying asleep. This is possibly the mission of that particular soul. So in order for some people to awaken, there has to be a contrast of those who don't so that you can experience it and witness it and see it. So understand that we really don't know the true journey of each soul. That is between them and the divine creator. And it is for you to focus on your soul journey. It is for you to focus on what you're here to do. And put your attention back on your heart, your energy, your attitude, your frequency. Focus on love. Focus on how you can open to more love, more forgiveness, more compassion for every soul on the planet, no matter what role they are playing, no matter what attitude they have. How can you open to more love? Because as you hold more love frequency in your heart and in your body, you're literally raising the frequency of the planet. So we need more and more and more souls holding more light, more light in their bodies by expanding their hearts, by opening their mind to seeing that what they have been told was true is actually not. And this is what is so upsetting for our humanity is how we have been lied to. But the truth is we allowed ourselves to be lied to. We allowed ourselves to be betrayed. So we have to take ownership of the part we have played in this entire divine Leela. So a Leela is a play, the divine play of God. We have played our parts and we have to own the parts that we have played. This is part of raising our consciousness. This is part of taking responsibility as a divine soul on the planet, which helps to raise the frequency and the consciousness of our earth so that we might avoid some lower timeline experiences <clears throat> that might be very unpleasant for our planet. We have choice. We have divine choice to remember. So if you feel that you are being controlled and programmed and manipulated by the outside world, 
ask yourself, how am I plugging into it and listening to it and allowing it to program me and make me think certain ways and act certain ways and feel certain ways? How am I giving away my power? How am I allowing myself to be disempowered by my choices? As a divine, sovereign being, which every soul on the planet is, you must wake up to how you are making choices to give your power over to systems that are lying to you, that are making you feel fearful, that are attempting to take control of your sovereignty because you're allowing it. You're saying yes. You're agreeing with it in some way. As part of the awakening of the planet, we must look at where we are saying yes when we actually should be saying no. We need to look at where we are saying no when we should actually be saying yes. That means that every soul has a personal responsibility to look at what they are plugging into, what they are saying yes to, and what they are saying no to. Go beyond the lower narratives being discussed on the planet step into a higher spiritual narrative, asking your heart, divine source, your angels, whatever your belief system may be. Ask, what is the truth? In this very moment, what is the highest truth that I can align with right here, right now? And of course, you may not get an actual physical answer. You might feel it in your body. A couple of days later, you may be guided to a book or a podcast. Maybe a couple of days later, you are directed to maybe join a particular online community. And all of a sudden, you start to see a higher truth in front of you because you are listening, because you've asked. So one of the quickest ways you can unplug from the lower narratives on the planet right now that are unfortunately only wishing us harm and not truly wanting to support us at the highest levels of our sovereignty. They may be saying they are, but underneath their lie is the truth. So you must feel into this for yourself and just ask your divine guidance, truth, What is the truth here in this moment for me? What is most aligned for me? And you can usually feel it in your body. If it is a divine higher truth, you will begin to feel a deeper peace within you as you align to the energy. If it is not aligned and it has untruth and unlove in the energy of the narrative, you will begin to feel an interesting wobble in your body. It might feel yucky or it might have this odd sensation or it just doesn't feel right. It just doesn't land right for you. That's your higher spiritual intuition letting you know that there's something with that information that isn't in alignment with highest spiritual truth and love. And you must listen to that. That is your powerful choice as a divine sovereign being of light to listen to the inner guidance within you in every moment no exceptions and in those moments that you listen to that inner guidance you are guaranteed by divine source you are guaranteed promised by divine source that you will feel or know or sense if something is a higher truth or not. We're all being asked to awaken to higher truth, to release ourselves from the bondage of the lies and the illusions of the lower energy narratives here on the planet. We have been controlled and ruled by lots of lower narratives that were not associated with God or love They were based on greed and selfishness. And they they were covered up with some interesting little story that somehow they were spiritually, spiritually aligned. But somewhere inside us, we just knew, hmm, I don't know. That doesn't feel right to me. 
You need to listen to that. Listen to that knowing within yourself. No one can tell you that. This is for you as a sovereign being to awaken to what is your divine truth. You cannot hand it over to a government or to a system outside yourself. This is part of the ascension process, the awakening. We have to awaken to the fact that we are divine spiritual beings and divine source God would never ask us to give over our power to a human lower system that wants to control, manipulate, and lie to us. That is not God created. So it is very important that you trust your inner knowing. It is very important that you get quiet, you unplug from the outside noise, and you listen deeply, and that you be willing to ask divine, source, God, angels, however you choose to pray or meditate, ask, what is the truth in this moment? What is the truth in this moment that empowers me and my spirit and my light? And whatever that truth is in that moment, listen, align with it, and disconnect from that which is not. Again, no one can tell you what is aligned and true for you as a divine sovereign soul. It is your job. It is part of your awakening. It is part of your responsibility as a divine created being of God to do this for yourself. That means you must claim your sovereignty. So if you sense or feel or believe that you're being controlled by the outside world, one of the first steps to take is to say, I am a sovereign being of light. I claim my sovereignty. I am under the control of no one or no thing. My sovereignty is to the highest light of truth and divine source God who created me. That is my highest truth. I am sovereign. I claim this now and forever. And make that statement every single day, especially in moments when you feel you are being in any way manipulated, lied to, pulled in a direction that doesn't feel right to you or to your heart or to your body. Claim your sovereignty in that moment. And you don't have to claim it out loud. I would at least claim it out loud once, for sure. But when you are in a public place or around a group of people and you're just feeling an energy that doesn't feel aligned or that feels a bit wobbly or odd to you, in that moment, silently, in your head, in your heart, claim, I am a sovereign being of light. I only align to that which is unconditional love and the highest truth of divine source. Anything that is not that, I release it now from my mind, my body, my soul. I only align to that which is of highest sovereign truth. I release all, I let go of all that is not any beliefs within myself that I have, any programming I have that I'm unaware of or that is unconscious in me, again, divine source, I release it now. Remove it from my energy field, remove it from the cells of my body, remove it from my heart and my spirit, that I might be an aligned, divine, sovereign being holding highest truth on this planet at this time to support the awakening of a new world, a new earth, a new planet filled with love, filled with peace, filled with prosperity, filled with happiness, filled with compassion. All of these higher conscious frequencies, vibrations, You can call that many names. 
higher characteristics of divine spirit. Anything that is that, that is what I align to. And if in the moment you really truly do not know what is true, all you have to do is say, in this moment, I align to that which is the highest truth. Whether I'm aware of it or not, that is my intention to align to that which is only the highest truth in this moment. So if you're watching something on television, if you are reading something in a magazine or in a newspaper, if you are in a public place or listening to a discussion or part of a group discussion, and things start to get a little bit wobbly, in that moment, claim the statement, I align only with that which is true. Everything that is not, may it not in any way be received by me, may it not in any way influence me. So you're claiming your sovereignty so that only that which is true has influence on you. Anything that is not true falls away and dissolves out of your life in that moment because it is not aligned with truth. But it requires you as a divine soul to make these statements. No one can do this for you. No more can we pretend that we're victims of the outside world. No, we are divine sovereign beings. We are powerful and we have responsibility to take hold of that power that we were given by divine source and to use it appropriately aligned with truth. And that means that every single moment you have to make the statement, I only do and say and be and act in ways that are in the most aligned truth. Anything that is not divine source, take it away now, please. That is a powerful request, and that which is not aligned with truth will be taken out of your life, because it is in some way interfering with your soul mission and your soul purpose and your alignment to the highest light. It is a powerful way to get very clear and to get very unconfused, is to in every moment state I align only to that which is the highest truth. And again, in that moment, you may not know what that is. It may be revealed to you later. It may never be revealed to you. But the fact that you make that statement automatically aligns your energy, your heart, your wisdom, your spirit, your soul. It automatically aligns you to that highest truth so that you start moving in that direction whether you know it or not. This is the way that divine source can keep you safe and protected is because you are asking. Remember, we live in free will zone and we have a certain type of free will here on the earth. We can choose good or bad, light or dark. So, the suggestion from the higher beings of light are for us to choose light. We have a choice. We do have free will to choose light or dark. We have a choice to choose truth or lies. So, it's in the intention we set that assists us to move in a direction that makes us feel lighter and safer and unafraid. Unafraid. I can truthfully say I have no fear at this time. I'm very aligned with highest truth. I tune in on a daily basis. I listen. I do that which creates highest light. Yes, I have my moments where I'm processing through old emotions from my family system. And I continue to align to the highest light. We who are holding the highest consciousness of light are being asked to transmute a lot of energy for our family systems and for this world. And if you are an empath, may you be blessed on your path because you are feeling a lot of the pain and suffering of this humanity at this time so that it can transmute through you. So it's important that you as an empath not own all of these feelings as yours because then you're going to think you're the one going crazy. When in truth, 
you're just processing a lot of the emotional baggage that much of humanity does not want to process right now. That's actually what an empath does. An empath feels what no one in the room wants to feel. An empath feels what a person that they're with or around doesn't want to feel. An empath feels what their family system doesn't want to process. And many empaths on the planet are profound light workers. You came here for this reason to process out all that the rest of humanity has not wanted to deal with or feel. So thank you to all of the profound, powerful empaths out there who are feeling deeply what the rest of humanity is refusing to feel. And know that it's not yours, dear one. It is for you to just process it through, take care of yourself, love yourself. Don't own any of the feelings. Know that they're processing through you. And you can call on your highest guides to assist you so that you process the energy, the lower energies that are being transmuted through you, through your light. You can transmute them outside your body in your energy field so that you don't have to fully take it on in your physical body, which can create other issues. Again, there's a lot more to say about that. And I encourage you to get the support and the help you need from other healing practitioners who can support you if you are one of those beautiful empaths who's helping to transmute so much of the lower energies of our planet. But in truth, we're all doing it to some extent, not just those who are called empaths. Many of us are feeling the emotions that our families are refusing to feel. We're feeling the feelings that our spouses are refusing to feel. And for many families, it's their children who are the empaths and that are processing a lot of the feelings that the parents and the generations before did not want to feel and process. So the children need to be taken care of and loved and supported. A lot of self-care needs to be taught to little ones and young ones so that they take care of themselves and realize that many of the feelings that they might be feeling actually don't belong 100% to them. And they have to be taught that. I have taught little ones as young as three how to not take on the energy of their family system. So even these youngest souls who are very wise, otherwise they wouldn't be on the planet right now, they would they actually understand this. They're still very closely spiritually connected to the other world, to the spiritual world when they're young. And that is their saving grace. They have so many divine angels and higher loving beings of light that are supporting them. So for those of you who do not have children, I invite you to please pray for every single child on the planet at this time because they are doing some powerful work and they truly are the most courageous souls on the planet at this time. For a soul to come into the planet at this time tells you how courageous and strong of a soul they are. So, Do not underestimate our incredible children because they will be the ones who rebuild this world. So we must begin praying for, supporting in every way we can the children of our world, making sure that they are safe, making sure that they are not brought into the control systems of the old world that only want to stop their conscious growth and their spiritual awareness because they don't want a new world built. They want to stay with the old. The truth is, the old world is gone. It's already gone. Light has already won. That's the good news. However, because we're on a physical plane, it takes time for the physical aspects of this world to catch up with the spiritual energetic. So the good news is, the light has already won, people. 
we can actually, in our hearts, celebrate that the light has won. And now it is for us to stay aligned to that highest truth and take actions and think and be from the place of the light has won and act and be in that way and do not give any attention, power, witness to that which is not the light. Because what you put your intention on grows. And so if you're listening to this, more than likely you are a light worker. And so you actually amplify whatever you focus on. So if you focus on the negative, the dark, the doomsday, you're actually putting energy to it. So as a light worker, you have to be very responsible in what you tune into and what you listen to and what you support because you will amplify it with your energy. So you have to ask yourself, hmm, do I really need to amplify the energy of this thing that I'm watching on television right now or this article I'm reading or this person I'm listening to? Do I really need to amplify that right now? Would that really support and help the planet? And if the answer is no, you turn it off, you walk away. This is going to take a lot of bravery for many of us to really stand in our power and unplug and pull away from that which is not aligned with truth, the highest truth. And that does mean we may have to, in some cases, disconnect from people we really love for a while. Does it mean it's forever? No. It just means that in this very intense time, we have to be very careful where we put our energy And what we choose to amplify. So it's for you to take the highest care of yourself. And your energy and your heart and your frequency. And stay in that highest light as best you can. So do the things that help you do that. Maybe it's nature. Maybe it's swimming. Maybe it's creating in some way. Maybe it's getting busy on a project that you have wanted to, um, you know, create in the world, but you've put it off for too long. Maybe it's time for you to focus on a part of your life that you've ignored for too long. So there's a lot of different things that we can focus on that bring in light and expand light versus feed the dark. So you, as a divine being, You are responsible for that. This message comes from the higher beings of light just to remind you of this truth. This information that's coming through is nothing new. It has always been. And when we awaken to it and we realize, oh, oh, it's that simple. I just stay aligned to truth and I unplug and stay away from that which doesn't feel aligned in truth. Yes. But it does take courage because that means you are going to have to pull away from things that maybe have been a very big part of your life before you awoke and understood that what you were involved in isn't aligned with light. So it will take courage to walk away. And you're being supported from the invisible realms in ways you cannot even imagine. So as you embark in earnest on your divine soul path, soul mission, even if you're not quite sure what it is, remember, even if you're not sure what the truth is, you can still align to it. Even if you're not sure what your soul mission is, you can still align to it with intention. So you make the intention, you state it, I align with the highest soul mission I am here to complete at this time divine source, angels, however you want to address the higher beings. I don't know exactly what my divine soul mission is, but I set the intention to align to it. And believe me, if you do this every day, you will start seeing your life change. You will start seeing things move in a new direction because you've just stated through your own free will to the universe and divine source that you're ready to align to your soul mission. 
And when you state that, believe me, things will start changing in your life very quickly because we need every soul on their soul mission right now. Literally, this is a call. This is a call to all light workers. Get on your soul mission now. Even if you're not sure what it is, align to it with intention. As I just stated, I align to my highest soul mission, even though I don't know what it is, I surrender to whatever it is. I'm listening. And then you listen and you get quiet. You take walks in nature. You do things to take care of yourself so that you might be able to move into deeper states of listening to your heart wisdom. And your divine beings, because we all have divine beings around us supporting us, whether you believe it or not, we do. And they're here to help you jump onto and remember your soul mission. And again, drop all ideas of what you think it is. Believe me, it's not what you think. (laughs) I can tell you it's not what you think. We have these really interesting ideas as humans that we know what our soul mission is. You know, it's like, I have to go to some far off country and save the babies. No, probably not. Maybe your soul mission is just to be in compassion and forgiveness for your family. That might be your entire soul mission. Or maybe your soul mission is to raise that beautiful baby to be a very conscious being who helps to rebuild our world. Or maybe that soul mission is just to smile at everyone and love everyone and forgive everyone every day when you're out in public. Maybe your soul mission is to take people out into nature so that they can have a respite and tune back into the truth. So know that everyone's soul mission is aligned with skills that they already have, that they were born with. It's not something you have to go and take a class for or get a certification for. Okay, Your soul mission has nothing to do with your education or certifications or training at all. You were born already encoded with your ability to do your soul mission. So the truth is there are no excuses. It really is a time for every soul to stand up, claim their sovereignty as a sovereign being of light, disconnect from all that is not truth in the moment, and awaken to your soul mission. That will keep you busy. You won't have to be watching television or reading magazines and newspapers and connecting with the chaos in the outside world. You will have enough to do by just making those powerful claims because in earnest your soul mission will begin and you will be guided to where you need to be and what you need to do and what you need to say or not say or not do so it truly is a simple calling for all of us at this time it's not complicated We as humans make it complicated because we have all these crazy ideas in our head of what we think it's supposed to look like. Your guides, the beautiful guides that are speaking today, are asking you to drop it. Drop all your ways of thinking you know what it looks like because you don't. It's for you to surrender. Surrender and say, you know, I don't know what it's going to look like. I just know that I want to align to highest truth. I want to feel good every day. I want to share my light and make others who pass by me I want to make them feel good I just want to do that so divine source I surrender I give up all the ways I think it should look or what I think is right or wrong and I open to the highest truth I'm listening show me I'm ready Beloveds, my heart sends so much love to you. The divine beings that are speaking through me send so much 
love to you because they know these are difficult times for our human selves. They know that this is a difficult time for our human egos. You are not abandoned. In fact, you are surrounded by so much love and support. Listen, get quiet, tune in, align to the truth, claim your sovereignty, and then say, I'm ready. I'm ready to do my soul mission in the world. Thank you, God. Blessings, everyone. Blessings, blessings. Blessings.